What's up, G.I. Joe fans? Welcome back to the MIB Master Museum. Guys, I had to find a, 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 a tough intro song for a tough bunch of guys. These guys are true warriors. Guys, this is our Adventures of G.I. Joe 2010 exhibit. And before we pack these guys up and put them into the archives, we kind of wanted to send them away with a little going away video. And I know I am missing somebody right now. Maybe two of these guys. I know I have more. I think, yeah, I think I'm missing about one or two of these guys. We have so many. I just... I was trying to go through all of my uh, inventory, and I think I might have missed a few of these guys. Guys, this is a time period in G.I. Joe's history where they were just having a lot of fun with these sets and these uh, G.I. Joe figures. This was a fun time. The late 90s to the early 2000s. This was a fun time to be a G.I. Joe collector. This was a different style of uh, G.I. Joe that Hasbro wanted to try out. And they tried it out for a while. Maybe a year or so. Um, this was geared towards uh, the younger demographic. They wanted kids to, to kind of interact with G.I. Joe. And this was the the, the playsets that would supposedly bring the younger demographic into G.I. Joe. Get them talking and excited about G.I. Joe. And unfo unfortunately, that never happened. That just would never be the case. Uh, as collectors, I, as, as a collector, I'll speak for myself. I loved it. Once again, you t you're you talking about a, a really cool set, uh, play sets, cool figures, tons of accessories. I mean, and the, the hours of fun that you could have with these, these action figures were endless. As you can see, they came with everything. Firing mechanisms, weapons, you name it. These guys had it. Uh, beautifully done. And I try to, every time I saw one of these guys from uh, Toys R Us, they were sold all over the place. I got, I have gotten them from, bought them from Toys R Us, Target, uh, Walmart, you name it. And I got the whole collection of the Adventures of G.I. Joe 2010. And no, this was not, this to show you how old these are. This was back when we considered 2010 to be futuristic. So this was still in the late 1990s and Hasbro wanted to kind of make these sets look more futuristic, you know, with their weaponry and all their gear and their equipment. So they called it the Ventures of G.I. Joe 2010. Like that's that's like a really long time into the future. <laughs> well, guys, you know, we've caught 2010 and past 2010 now so these figures are a little dated let's bring this guy down but they they came with some awesome let's bring him over here they came with some just some awesome and beautiful accessories and the design team for hasbro during this time period 
really had some really outlandish and really original ideas. Here's a crossbow that actually shoots. Here are the, the firing weapons, projectiles. And what you had was a bunch of rehashed, used, reused equipment and accessories that they recolored and put on G.I. Joe. So Hasbro didn't lose any money in this, in this sense. They were going to take a shot at the younger demographic, but at the same time, they didn't want to lose any money. So they, they, they just added a bunch of um, rehashed and reused equipment, weapons, accessories, you name it. This helmet, uh, for instance, was used on, oh my goodness, countless of different G.I. Joe uh, types of um, uh, play sets and figures. But it looked really cool. You know, you just a new paint job goes a long way. Guys, if you're just joining us, please like and subscribe. And this is one of my favorite ones. Let's bring him down. This is one of my favorite ones right here. See, some of these guys are a little dusty. This is my uh, Operations Intruder Defense. He's on another planet. G.I. Joe's on another planet. Look at his chest plate there. He's on another planet fighting aliens of some sort. And look at the gun. We've seen this gun before. Uh, this is um, a Hall of Fame type weapon. This helmet right here, the G.I. Joe Space Corps helmet. This is a rehash, reused helmet from the Hall of Fame figures. There's his gloves. Beautiful outfit, black and blue and gray, camouflage, body vest. I got this guy from Target back in, I believe, uh, 1999. Let's check, check the year on that. Just want to get you some years on some of these guys. No, 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 I stand corrected. It was uh, 2000, my fault. Yeah, but it was definitely Target, so it was somewhere between 99 and 2000, so it was 2000. And look at the back of the, the card. Beautifully done. Here's the backstory on our G.I. Joe, Adventures of G.I. Joe 2010. Just... Beautifully made. You couldn't go wrong with these guys. Once again, just a fun time to be a G.I. Joe collector. Crazy colors, different paint schemes, different uniforms. Uh, Mitch and match, basically, is what, what you had going on with a lot of these, these figures. Sit this guy back over here. Let's check this guy out. And this is one of the more basic ones, if you want to call him that. <laughs> body vest. And how many times have we seen this body vest, you know, on different G.I. Joes and different uh, Hall of Fame G.I. Joes? Beautiful head sculpt. Mask there, the goggles. Uzi in his hand. Here's his backpack. And this is a backpack that was used on the uh, Major Blood Hall of Fame. G.I. Joe. And this backpack, you can he can scale walls with him. You just hook him in a backpack, press the button, and the backpack will make him climb walls. Operations Lions Dan. 
beautifully made, beautifully done. Guys, what do you think of our G.I. Joe, Adventures of G.I. Joe 2010? Do you have any of these guys? Do you remember these guys? Uh, these were some of the cooler carded figures. Let's set this guy over here. I want to bring in, let's bring in, here's a guy right here. Here's a pretty cool guy. Let's set him up. Let's set this guy out here. You've seen this guy in a few of my videos. He's never had an individual, he still has never had an individual video done on him. <laughs> He's done a lot of TV time, but not by himself. But this is a fun figure. I bought this guy from, uh, I believe, yes, from Target. He has a scope that you can actually look in. He's a sniper. Look at the gun there. He's got the old, the old um, classic collection hands. Got the face mask there, the, the green visors, beautiful head sculpt. I love that head sculpt. And let's see what the what's the name of this here? Try me. Locate targets through sniper scope. Pretty cool. Operation. Sand Sting. Beautifully made. I saw this guy and I, once again, it was so outlandish, so crazy, I had to get it. Absolutely, positively had to get it. Like I said, these guys, a lot of these guys don't look uh, dated. They don't really look, really look like they look like you, they could be on toy store shelves, you know, now. And you're talking about 18, 19 year old action figures um, from way back when, from nearly two decades ago. But they look like they could still be on toy store shelves today. And the fun part about it is you can still track down some of these guys. You can still track down a lot of these guys. On uh, Cotswell Collectibles, I've had uh, subscribers uh, uh, write in and comment and want to know exactly where can they can get, get a lot of the G.I. Joes. Where do I get a lot of my G.I. Joes from? Well, everything you see on this stage here is from my very own personal collection. You say, well, personal collection... All of them in your collection. Well, I don't mean it like that. What I mean is that I actually went to toy stores two decades ago, or nearly two, two decades ago, to purchase these guys out of toy stores and department stores and regular stores, as opposed to use the website, using the website, uh, different toy websites. So uh, a lot of these guys didn't, you know, all, all of, I'd say about 98%. 97 98 percent of my gi joe collection is from hard work of driving around from store to store to store to store for years and years and years collecting these guys so but it, when i do need a joe that i can't find or I, I just simply don't have in my collection i i always use cotswell collectibles um, that's the first uh toy website that I actually start buying GI Joes from. And that was I've been doing business with those guys for nearly 15 years. So uh, when, when you're on a first name basis with the owner and, and most of the staff, <laughs> you, you, you've been doing a, a lot of business for a long time. <laughs> uh, those guys are great over there. So Art and his team uh, over there are simply phenomenal. They're collectors as well. So. Uh, that's where I get a lot of my G.I. Joes from. And I believe they are carrying a few of these guys. Um, a lot of these guys are just so fun to look at. They're aesthetically beautiful to look at. They're very uh, eye-catching and extremely desirable. A lot of collectors like these guys. Because they, they weren't out very long. They didn't stay out very long. 
they were here today and pretty much gone tomorrow. This is our Operation Shadow. Let's get that, move that out the way. Shadow Ops. Operation Shadow Ops. And you can see he's got a little bit of everything. Got the headgear on there. Mic com. Glove. Some type of a, uh, electronic power glove or something. Here's his firing projectile. This is uh, this weapon that actually fires. So a lot of the weapons that you see here were actually spring activated loaded weapons. Super cool. Let's back this guy back up. Let's, let's bring this guy down. This is our Operation Climbing Claw. And if the name doesn't get you, what will? But let's look at it and give you a good indication. Look at the, the weapon he has. And it fires. And here's the weapon. This weapon actually fires these projectiles. How cool is that? Not to mention he's got this gigantic machete-like type razor jagged knife. And then he has this gigantic claw that he grips. Kind of a, a, a Wolverine-esque type weapon there. He's got his beautiful uh, paint job on his face there. I love that head sculpt. He's got the mic comm headset on. Look at his, uh, he's got his battle vest here, dog tags, and he's got the same paint scheme on his, on his body, arms, torso. And it matches the camouflage pants that he has on. Let's get you out. So just outlandish, yes. Cool, yes. Futuristic, definitely. Uh, outdated? No, not really. Uh, a lot of these figures, and this is a figure, let's get you a date on this figure. Uh, th these figures, once again, look like they could be on toy store shelves today. I wish they were on toy store shelves today. This is from 2000. This is, you know, this is an 18-year-old action figure. An 18-year-old action figure uh, that looks like he could he could actually be on a toy store shelf today. And I think kids would actually buy this guy. But, you know, don't take my word for it, guys. Leave a comment in the comment section right underneath this video. We would like to to see what you guys think of our of our Adventures of G.I. Joe 2010 exhibit. Oh, here's a good one. Here's a good one. And actually, we, we have extended our... Let's get you a, a long shot. We have extended our staging area. We, we talked about that a, a little bit in another video, but we've been doing a lot of work in our main collection room. We want to be able to get more figures, um, bigger figures and more figures on our staging area so we can do uh, more... Uh, big pr bigger productions so you, you can see more figures at one time so some work went into it but look at this guy we're excited about that and this is a uh, operation swamp attack this is another one of my favorites as you can see his uh, Uzi with the uh, folding uh, stock everything is aqua blue even the grenades and here's a, a nice touch with the foam uh, firing uh, projectile it goes into here it's got his machete there it's got his tank there air hose tank connects there beautifully done He's got how many kills he's got on the side of it. Beautifully done. There's his, uh, his fins, his flippers. Sorry for some of the dust. Beautif beautifully made. 
Beautifully done. Just gorgeous. We got a heat seeking missile launcher. So this guy is so heavy. I he I actually have to kind of keep him by himself because he leans for it so much because of this gigantic breathing apparatus he has connected to him. This is a by no stretch of the imagination, this is a very heavy, heavy carded figure. So you got a lot on these carded figures. Tons and tons of uh accessories and equipment hours and hours of playability time uh, if you were a kid purchasing some of these these beautiful figures guys we have more fun in store for you we'll be back I'm going to go grab a cup of coffee, relax a little bit, do some more work in the uh in my uh museum collection room here in the main collection room, I should say. But we just want to show these guys to you before they uh they say their final goodbyes and go to the uh storage area in our archives. Guys, stay tuned for more action, more fun. You know the routine. God bless. And keep collecting.